BCM guns. And I've got a new rifle from Sauer, it's called the 505. If you've been shooting for a bit or know your guns, Sauer have been around a long time. In fact, since 1751, they're rated as the oldest German, if not European, firearms manufacturer. They really hit the big time back in um, 1993 when they introduced the 202, which was then rated as the most popular hunting rifle in Europe. So, the 202 sold it on until 2015, which is not a bad record when you think about it. Then they decided to replace it with a rifle called the 404. And the 404 basically is quite a rethink on the, um, on the 202. It still retained its switch barrel, it looked very similar. Where it differed was, it now came with a mandatory QD scope mount, also a four position trigger, and it came with a little key that you could adjust everything on. And it was not exactly cheap, really not. But they sold quite well, I must say. And then, to my, much to my surprise, the 505 appeared in, in 2024. This rifle, I really rather like. And yet, really, if you stack it next to a 404 or a 202, there's not a lot in it. But it has got this certain feel about it. And the other good news is, though still horrendously expensive as all sour blah the mouths of products are this compared to a 404 saves you about 750 odd quid which is pretty damn good okay so let's get to it this is the sour 505 xt model which is the synthetic thumb hole stock which i really like it sort of has an adjustable cone and first time a sour offering it in black rather than the usual green the barrel is 19 inches which is quite short. I measured, I thought it was 20, it's just 19, and it's chambered in 308. However, like all rifles of its type, you can get 22, 24 inch barrels, and there's different weights and a host of calibers, as you can imagine, the usual thing. Also, you have a number of stock options. You've got a wood stock, there's the carbon fiber version of this, which again, is horrendously expensive, but nowhere near as expensive as the 404 carbon stock. Then you have a straight hand version of this as well. So, you know, you're not spoiled for choice. So the receivers are redesigned primarily so that they can do away with the, the original sour QD mount, which again, I didn't like. I always found it a little bit awkward to adjust. And what they've done, they've, they've we'll see when we take this off, they've reconfigured the receiver to accept exactly the same mount as the Blaser R8, which is good news. Weight of this is 7.7 .7 pounds, bare-backed, and 40 inches. It's not light, but it feels good in the hand, and say, it's nice and compact. They say they've lightened up the decocker, but I've always found with these push-up decockers, if you're in the aim, perhaps it's just me, but if you're in the aim, pushing it up is quite hard. Um, the other thing is the four-weight trigger. Basically, it's, it's a little rotary dial on the inside of the action. And according to the information we've been told, that they've put a lighter weight as, as the first one. So basically what you get now in pounds is, first one is 0.77 pounds, which is silly, silly light, 1.66 pounds, which is the sort of thing I'd, I'd probably have in a rifle, 2.2 and then 2.8 pounds. Um, it could be, you know, this day and age when you're producing new equipment, then it, marketing is everything and you, and you need features to attract people in. That might be why. The other thing is you can take the butt off quite easily, Allen key in there, whip it off, so you can put it in a, a compact package. And that is basically the rifle. First of all, what I really like is the fact that they've scrapped that sour mount, and now it's a blazer mount, adapted. So you flick the levers up as before, wind them forward, off she comes. If you can see, they've reconfigured the receiver completely. On the 404, you had sort of a, a, a mounting base here and here. This, they've machined it all the way, and this is all at the front. In fact, they do say that the receiver starts off as a 6572 gram lump of uh, bar steel stock, and it ends up as a 732 gram, and they've really lightened it, which gives the gun very good balance. This is the rear sling swivel, which is removable and also is the key for the whole rifle. First of all, you put it in the back like so, top hole, locate it, 
give it a slight tweak, comb comes up, tweak it in and lock it. Simple as that. You need the comb down to get the bolt out, otherwise it won't come out. You press this catch here, lift up, and up she comes. So I've redesigned the bolt, it's now a one-piece bolt, which actually is harking back to the old 202 system. The 404 had an actual bolt head, which did make changing calibers, if you need to, a little bit cheaper. But here you've got to buy the whole bolt, but that's, that's the way it is. Also, it's because it's one piece, it's smooth as hell, and it, the action runs really sweetly. New decocker, they say it's lighter, it is a little bit, I would say. Yeah, but basically how it works is when it's down here, the whole action is locked, completely safe. You can have one at the spout, doesn't matter. You drop the rifle and stamp on it, it won't go bang. So to open the action up, you push this catch up about an eighth of an inch, the bolt's open, that's for general feed and function. Once you're chambered, that's you ready to fire. Boom, reload, recock all day long. Come out of action, just press the base of this top button a little bit. You hear a little tiny click and it slides down and that's it. So I now use a polymer magazine in line and you get a choice of two, three or five. This is the five shot, would always be my preference. So it's all the same length, all one action. And all they do is put a filler block in the back to accommodate different calibers. This one's in 308 and the cake round sits about there where my finger is. Got a push button at the front and you can push it forward and it locks the magazine in place, which is no bad thing. So you need to take the forehand off to access the barrel. So you put the key in this hole here, you push it against spring tension and turn it, probably roughly half a turn. Then just grab the forehand, give it a yank, and it's off. You can now see in the middle of the picture, the three screws that are there that retain the barrel. Allen key, you slack these off, you don't, don't have to remove them, which is good. Slack them off. Slack them off. Look at that, they're a bit stiff. But just make sure they're slack like so, which means you can then pull down this lever like so. All you do is pull out the barrel. If you look here, you can see there's a cutout here which sits about eight o'clock. So when you put the barrel back in, basically that's your gas escape. So you offer it up. It's quite a, quite not tight, but it's certainly snug. So, and it locks in. Basically, push it in, rotate it till that lug engages, and then the barrel is equally set. But before you lock these back up, you shut the bolt, which basically gives you a headspace. Then you wind this in. And then you wind these in. As always, you do them in sequence and you don't tighten one up and leave the others loose. You do them a bit. So basically, finger on there, pull, get tension on it until the Allen key just starts to flex. You see? And that is just good enough. Okay, trigger adjustment. Using the same key as usual. In there, there's a little rotary, it's basically a rotary dial. A little white square that indicates which one you're on. Currently, this one is on number four. And the good thing is, as it clicks round, you can feel it and hear it knock back into the next one. So right, that is now number one, which is the lightest. I'll just that's just very soft and I would say some people would have a problem with recognizing when it's going to go off that's just me okay number two which is there a little bit more pressure which is good but again quite soft Number three, click. Now it starts to get a little bit more plausible here. Better, firmer, 
a little bit soft pickup and finally number four firm I think they're saying this is 2.8 pounds and not a bad break I think of the three or the four I should say I'd go with number three okay let's make some noise five rounds lock it in Right, what do I think? Well, mixed views actually. Nice rifle, nice layout, very comfortable. I like the fact that you've got the adjustable comb if you need it. Love the elastomer inserts on the fore end and pistol grip. I've got those on my R8, they really are useful, certainly in the shitty weather. I like the fact you've got the one key that has pretty much everything on the gun apart from change barrels, you need a proper Allen key for that. Axie wise, the weather's been bloody awful and I haven't had a huge chance to do my usual lot of Axie testing. But with normal 170 grain tip strike, which is a ballistic tip, lead cord, it was pulling about 0.7 at 100 meters. So pretty good. And also I had, just to check the non-lead option, I had some uh, Hornaday Wild Boar 165 grain monolithic hollow point with a ballistic tip that was a little bit slower um, and, a, and group size was about probably just a tad tighter not a lot in it but it, it sure shoots well for for a non-lead velocity wise over the chrono you were getting about two six twenty out of the tip strike and hornaday was about two 590 or oh, it does tend to be a little bit lower than what it says in the box but both good loads round about producing 2500 foot pounds so thereabouts so more than enough punch if you need it what i don't like a couple of things the magazine catch is really hard to operate and i just find it a bit awkward you're trying to push it you think it's coming it's not so that's that's a, a bit of a mark against it it's no big thing I like the fact you've got a five round capacity if you need it you've got three two and five i would always pick the five because that's how i like to have my rifles bolt is very smooth and slick as they as they do say it's, it's very easy to cycle the decocker is actually like they do so they've made it lighter it's not by a huge amount but as you can see i can actually do it in the shoulder usually with my r8 and 404s i sort of have to drop it a bit because I can get a better push in it but that's something you've got to think about and my big niggle is the trigger it's it's a very strange trigger it feels spongy and at, at one and two settings one setting is seven pounds and that is incredibly light and because it's spongy there's no real feel from the transition between when you take up the trigger to when it breaks and it's also very very light and at position two which is 1.66 pounds it's nice and light without being too light, but the transition there is still a little bit flaky. And if I was taking a, um, somebody stalking, hadn't done much rifle experience, and they have one of these things, I would not let them use positions one or two because it's easy enough to get up on the aim and then put your finger on the trigger inadvertently and bam, it's gone off. Of the four settings, I found three to be the best. It started to firm up, some of that sponginess went and it broke quite nicely and the same to be said for number four though it was at 2.8 pounds it was starting to feel a little bit heavy for a decent sporting rifle but you may f find different but to be brutally honest i'm not a big fan of uh, adjustable weight triggers if you buy the right rifle then it's going to have a trigger that works i think both the triggers on my r8 and my mo3 they break about two pounds which for me is perfect don't have to do anything to them don't have to think about it the other good thing is the price. Okay, it's 3.7 or thereabouts, which is 
not cheap for a sporting rifle as we all know however it is part of the blazer group so it's big money however if you look at the price of the blazer professional success the r8 which i have they're about the same price and it's pretty much the same layout apart from the straight pull action it's got a nice stock thumb hole blah 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 and it does feel good and a lot of people don't like straight pulls they can't see the point of them and i can understand that i think they're great but that's neither here nor there so if you're looking for a top end rifle that's not a straight pull then this sour really does fill that box and also probably if you're thinking about a seiko 90 then maybe this might appeal to you a bit more i don't know but overall and also as i said before it is a comparable sour 404 cinco xt with a synthetic stock is 4400 and i say this is three seven some change so you're saving around about 700 quid for what is essentially the same rifle though of the two given the choice i would pick the 505 over the 404. so if you like that tell your friends support the channel obviously and if you want to speak to me it's the usual pmore.shootingsports at gmail.com thanks for looking in hope i'm still entertaining you and uh more soon and as ever shoot straight keep safe be good